Right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, convert the schematic into the PCB layout and wrap up this project. And in the meantime, I'm trying to add one more component to the PCB, which is a switch. So as you are looking at right now, this is a switch I just ordered from Amazon. I ordered pretty much 100 or something. Uh, it's quite a few uh, in there. So uh, you can see that the through holes, you know, the layout on the PCB for this switch is super simple. Just a through, three through holes. So you just need to draw three pads and make them in the correct diameter and the correct distance and uh, create a symbol in the in the schematic. Then you are done. So it's pretty simple. Let's, let's do it. Uh, we probably need to create uh, a device in Eagle PCB for this component. So here is a real uh, switch you are going to receive. Uh, so that's uh, Eagle PCB's control panel. So I will start. I think I can, you know, put it in here. So I will start with a footprint, I guess. So the name of the footprint will be switch number one. And okay, create a switch. So do not forget, get the correct grid first. Okay, let's take a look at the dimension for everything. It's um, this one. So the diameter is like 0 0.5 by 0 0.3. So I think it's fine to have a 0 0.5 by 0. Uh, you know, a little bit larger. Probably 0. Point, since the through holes are normally uh, a circular shape, so you, you are not trying to create a rectangular shape. Uh, what about 0. 0.7 by 0. 0.7? You know, just give a little bit uh, more room for for the pin, so you can insert it into the through hole. So zero point seven by zero point seven, and it's two point five in between the three through holes. Okay, let me write it down on paper. Two point five and zero point seven. Okay, now go to here and draw a through hole. <clears throat> So the diameter should be, so the drill should be 0 0.7, it's pretty close. And the square shape or wrong shape, I don't think that matters actually. Um, let's just use a square. I think default shape is fine. But I'm wondering if this is, if this is a top matter or not. So, because the color looks weird, it's like uh, it's green. So let's check really quick, go to layers. And if I turn off top, hmm, turn off bottom. Oh, so pads, so that's pads. So which means it's actually on both sides, on the top and bottom, on both sides. Okay, never mind. So it's not affecting anything. All right, so that's the first one. And the second one, you are expecting that one to be located at somewhere, which should be because the distance between the two, the each through hole should be two point five millimeter. So let's use two point five. And the third one should be seven point five. Okay, wait, two point five, two point oh five. Sorry, it should be five. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much um, everything. And I think we need to draw a silk screen so we know that location should be the switch. So the silk screen, so let's take a look first at the layout of the switch. So what's the size for for that? So I think it looks like uh, uh, 8.5 by 3.5. So let's do 9 by 4. What about that? 9 by 4. I'm going to draw it. I will start from here. 
So it should be 9 in this direction. So we can look at here, right? So 9. No worries, I'm going to move it later. So here it should be 4.5. Is that 4.4? 4, I think it should be 4. 4 and 9. Okay. All right. So now it's done. And move it. Sorry. Move it uh, into select every edge at the same time. Okay. And move. I think this looks pretty good. All right, I'll do this. Save. So now do not forget name. And this should be at T name. T name should be on the top, I think. T name is here. And T value as well. Right click, properties. Change it to value and do T value. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a layout view. Save it and come back. Go to others. So that's the layout of the switch. And so now let's do a symbol for the switch. So I think let's take a look at the if there's anything we can borrow from SparkFun library, I hope there will be something. Switches, so many switches. I just need a single switch. What about this? It only has two terminals. I don't think it is correct. I need a three terminal switch. What about this? That's a push button. That's a two terminal switch. It's actually a push button as well. Um, triple throw. All right, I think this is a correct one. Okay, switch POL. Let's remember this one. Yeah, probably this one is the right one. Yeah, let's use this one. Toggle. Great. I'm going to use this one. And I will save it. Okay. Now I'll close and come back to this library. You'll see Toggle is here. So I'm going to directly make the connection. So you need to create the device first, right? So this should be a switch underscore one. Create it. <clears throat> And definitely grab that switch toggle thing and put it uh, here in the middle. Okay. And then you need a local package. I'll grab the switch underscore one and let's make the connections. So, uh, the, so the pins are one, two, three. So one, I don't know which one is one actually. So let's take a look. I think it should it's better to be like one, two, three. Probably it's more user friendly. I don't know if I can see it. Hmm. I couldn't see it. Can I? No, I cannot. I have to go back to the control panel and go to the library. Maybe let's save it first. Let's save it first and come back to here and check out the name so this is p this is s this is o so spo okay spo okay which is all right so let's come back and do this yeah, it's been added, I believe. So right here, we just need to make the connections. So SPO, I think SPO, S with one, let's connect. And P with two, connect, O with three. 
and then OK and save. I think this is ready to use now. So let's go back to the schematic and grab it. So you want to locate that switch over here. So when now after you plug into the power, you still have a second a secondary switch to turn on, turn off the entire power system. So it's not like you plug in, it's power it's it's powered up, uh, which is a little bit uh, not super user friendly. So let's delete all these little things. Okay, and <clears throat> I will find the switch over here this all right <clears throat> and then i'll make the connection from here to here and here to here so in that case I will have to float this pin. So this is either being shorted to here or here. Um, and I think there will be an internal, because on the top, above the PCB, the switch is going to make the connection. You only are, you're only lay out, laying out a, a three paths on the PCB. So it is actually fine. Uh, for this for this one, you don't even need to name it. For this one, you need to name it as uh, power in because whenever it is being shorted to here, this becomes power in. Right? So name it as power in. And this one should be connected to nowhere. So I can either do nothing with it or I can have a wire and, you know, just connect to nowhere. Let's see if this has that function. Since I remember in in Altium there is a curl sign, which means you can you're, you're telling people it is uh, floating. So there's nothing being connected to it. But I, I'm not seeing that function here. Hmm. Nope. So I'm not seeing that. So I think I would just just keep it blow. So it's not a big deal, no problem at all. See, because electric, electrically, uh, it, it works pretty well. It works. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's convert it to PCB. So it looks like this. And let's take a look at the switch. See if that's doing what what we expect. So I don't think this is being connected to anywhere. So we can see that uh, these two pins has a name, has been connected to somewhere, but this is not. So I think this is fine. This is what we expect, actually. Uh, so this should be correct, actually. Um, all right, so that's everything on the PCB. So we can uh, just drag them to here and uh, do the auto routing. All right, so I just placed all the parts into the dimensions frame. So now I need to drag it back to the region. You need to select everything and drag it back. And now I think it's ready to run the auto router. <clears throat> Just run it. So if you pick up effort high, there will be a couple of other options. It's like a different threads to run the auto routing. Uh, just there are just more more uh, options, but I think for this kind of simple PCB, it actually doesn't matter. It just takes longer time. Uh, I'll still do it so you can take a look what that looks like. So if you see the 100 percent for most of them, which means it's working. Okay, if you are seeing like 90 something percent, pretty much uh, it's gonna fail later on. So don't need to uh, waste too much time on that. You just need to end the job and rip up all the traces um, and do it again, just trying to figure out the problems. I think this will work pretty easily, uh, not a problem at all. So after that, I think I will uh, wait until everything is done. I think it's done, it's just 100% everywhere. So I'll end the job and I will do the rest next, okay? 
So you need a polygon, and the polygon should be on the top. So run the top uh, copper first. This is pretty important, you know, because this is a power module, and you do need copper everywhere to dissipate the heat. Okay, so do not ignore. Oh, just zoom in first at the very first place. Let's do it again. So I'm going to zoom into here and snap to the gray. Okay, and go to here. Same thing. And here. 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 So you just need to put a GND there. <clears throat> and then you can pour. So rest nest is here. Do it. So we got a top copper poured. And now let's do the bottom. So I'm going to draw the bottom polygon. And so still want to zoom in. All right. Okay. Gindi boom. And rest nest. Okay. Look at top, top and bottom. So two layers. So um, I think it's done. You can. So I'm gonna uh, create a Gerber file from this because the CAM processor, and it should be the Gerber. <clears throat> so everything looks fine. Just need to process the job and save everything to the desktop. Um, so it's done, and so we need to go to the web website to check everything, see if it is right. So remember what's the name of the web page? I think it's called PCB View or something. Let's take a look. All right, PCB Viewer. So go back here. Double click and find out everything. So I, normally I will copy the drill file into the Gerber file here, and I'll make a zip zip folder from uh, everything. And uh, I'm going to upload the zip file to the PCB Viewer web page and also PCB Way as well. So here's the website. So I will drag it. And drop to here. <clears throat> and load file. So the main thing you want to take a look. So the main things actually, a couple of other things you need you want to take a look. So the copper and <clears throat> you couldn't see anything because it's like poured everywhere. So it's hard to see the details. But I think that's fine. Let's let's just uh, uncheck it. So the main part, you know. So here's the top metal. So you can see these these ground plates are grounded properly, since you can see all the connections are uh, made are made to the poured copper. Okay, so that should be should be fine. And then I want to take a look at the T stop. See if I can see. The solder mask. So here's the solder mask at top, right? So you can see that this part is covered, so which means it's going to be a bare copper in the future. So this is a, a success. So, so compared to the first tutorial, you do need this part to be exposed so you can solder something to it. Okay. Uh, so you can see all these metal pads are. Uh, applied a solder mask, um, you know, stop. So which means they will be metal, so you can solder to it, right? And silk screen, take a look, see if you have the all the labels you need. Silk screen is here, <clears throat> right? So my concerns are all these inputs and outputs because the user probably have to take a look at all these 
uh, pin so they know which one is which, right? So here's a uh, input. Okay. Uh, if you put a jumping wire here, the little jumper, you will short it and enable that input. So here are the output. After you enable that, you can directly connect the signal to here so you can get a power from it. Okay. All right. So I think this is fine. It's going to work. Uh, if you, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go to PCB way. <clears throat> and since I have a account with it, so I'm going to directly log in. And uh, I will directly start a port online. And so you don't have to change too many options. There are single pieces and the dimension difference than just one. And you do need to mirror your PCB really briefly. It doesn't have to be super accurate. You need to mirror it so you can give the data to the code. It can give you some um, approximation for the, for the cost. So this is somewhere around uh 65 right 65 by what by 86 let's say 65 by 86 doesn't matter if the width and width and uh, lens you can swap them i have never seen any problem so 10 pieces will be free um within any quantity within 10 pieces will be the same price. So if you pick up five and 10, it's the same price. And two layers, and you know you don't need to change all these things. And I prefer blue color. Um, I don't know if what kind of color do you prefer, but I think blue, white, and green, and red, all these colors are the same price. So no additional uh, cost. And I think that's it. And I will do a calculation and see what is the cost? You can see actually, so the PCB cost is five dollars and the shipping is uh, is eighteen dollars, so totally twenty two dollars. If you are doing order on this at the first time, so probably you, you will get a some discount out of it. Uh, it takes pretty much uh, seven to nine days, including the fabrication and shipping. So it's pretty good. And but I will, I'm gonna check. Probably I will check everyone's. PCB before I can send it out for fabrication. Um, hopefully you can get it done. That's everything about this PCB power module. Uh, hopefully you have learned something about making PCBs and power modules. And uh, good luck with everything.